Okay, let's uh, start back again. So welcome everyone uh, to the practical session. Uh, uh, this is the second practical session for the using Rear Earth Engine with uh, satellite remote sensing and uh, uh, for the water source applications. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday in my email and I shared the exercise as well that uh, this session will be to focus more on the using the satellite missions to drive the area elevation curve curve of reservoirs. Uh, I'll just go very quickly through the exercise and I'll try to do a live demo for everyone so you can follow me and then we will assign you to the breakout rooms. Uh, and by the way, in the breakout rooms, I, I think yesterday it went very well. Uh, just suggesting maybe if you want to uh, kind of working together, uh, I know it's a kind of challenging to do exercise altogether, but maybe like someone take the lead and share his slides and then the others will be following what he's doing. And they, at the same time, they can work on their computers. And then if they have any error, then they can check the one with the one who is sharing his screen. So you can do something like this. Maybe it, it might work uh, better so that you can all work together and uh, exchange your uh, ideas. So uh, again, the teams are, uh, will be the same. I mean, uh, 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 just the, we have some guests that, uh, as yesterday, I will assign them again to the same team. So if anyone, his name is not here, don't worry. I mean, I'll be assigning you to the same team like yesterday. So this is just the teams that we we have from, uh, uh, from yesterday. Uh, so the second exercise today, as I said, will be to focus on the driving of reservoir area elevation curve in the Google Earth engine. And uh, it's, a, it's, it's a little long, but don't worry because I prepared all the scripts. So what you have to do is only run the script. You don't have to write anything like yesterday, uh, except that you will might be if you are be focus if you want to focus on a, your different region or different reservoir. Because here I illustrated for the highest one then. But if you want to do that for a different uh, reservoir, then you will make just a few changes. And this will be good that you can go through the code. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned here in this note that the scripts will be provided, but I, I highly recommend it that you can go through the scripts after the workshop or maybe today later or maybe after the workshop, you will have the scripts anyway, so you can go through it anytime. But so I, I think it will be good to visit the script and understand what is going on, what equations we are using and so on. But I think during the practical sessions, the idea is just to uh, understand how we do that in the using using the uh, remote sensing, how to drive the area elevation curve. Uh, and as I said, I, I'll, I'll be uh, going through the, the steps for highest one dam. And just one thing, you will notice that this exercise has five different kind of five different parts of the exercise. So for each part, I will provide in a box the link for this script. So once you, you if you click on the link, then you will go to the, uh, you will see this uh, this window with the script already uploaded for the, uploaded there in, in the script. And if you if you do the run, if you run the script, you will see the results. So I'll show you a live, I'll show you now a live demo for how to do that. And then I will assign you for breakout rooms so you can kind of like uh, playing with this uh, uh, Google Earth Engine codes. And just before leaving, uh, just to remind everyone with the, the agenda for tomorrow. So tomorrow we will have the first session in the morning. So Today we uh, we have seen two applications. We visited first Africa to uh, see the first application for reservoir operation in the Nile yeah. Basin, and then I think uh, we, we yeah just uh, then uh, we uh, uh, we visited uh, we traveled I mean to South Asia to uh, visit the Indus and Ganges Basin with the Seabad and Grace, what India have uh, presented. And then tomorrow we will fly to the US with the Shari Rahmat to see how to apply the remote sensing, uh, uh, I mean, the satellite remote sensing to estimate the river temperature and how this can impact the operation of reservoirs as well. Uh, then again, we'll have a break. And then the last session will be tomorrow. This will be a very a kind of, uh, I think it's, uh, it's good to attend because it's a, uh, uh, but be more like a, a demo of different operation systems. So there is no like too much details into research or too much theory in this session. It will be just a kind of uh, showing you how to uh, 
integrate what we we don't want to say to learn because it's only two days but what we have seen during these two days from different tools different satellites how can we integrate all of this with the models which we have shown how to integrate all of this to build uh operational system like the one i i mentioned here is an i the, the nebra system but we'll also show you a different other systems like the one nishan uh developed for like a, at a global scale for reservoir operation which is called rat so anyway we will show different uh operation system tomorrow so there will be this this session will be a lot of fun so to that you can see this and how it in. we'll give you some time if you want to play with these systems uh, then uh the last it will be a workshop conclusion i think this is very important to attend so because we want to listen from you on how to keep this workshop running what what do you what do you learn what if you if we do it one more time what is specifically i mean if you want to focus only on one topic what what would you recommend so that next time we might focus only maybe in google earth engine maybe on reservoir operation or specific applications maybe some of you might be interested in only the theoretical uh, remote sensing or something like that so uh, that will be very important to learn and uh, to be an open discussion we want to talk all together and maybe also discussing if there's any opportunities to collaborate in the future so uh, I, I i would i would i would like that all of you try to be there in this uh, conclusion sec uh, session so we can learn and i will uh, yeah maybe i'll send an email also today with the survey if you want to finish it by today and but i think it's better maybe to wait to tomorrow so you also see all the sessions and then maybe doing the survey together during this session so let me go again back to the practical session i will stop sharing and then i will go to the the google drive uh let me share my screen uh, So I'm sharing on my screen for uh, again the, the 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 Google Drive the shared folder, and I hope everyone got got the link. I shared the link yesterday again to the participants again and also to the 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 guests. So I added the guest list to the email the email list I have. So now everyone I I think should have uh, this folder shared. But if you if you know anyone that's not in the in the email list I sent yesterday, then Please let me know so I can add him and he can uh, get an access to this folder. Uh, so again, the practical session, the exercises, I, we have the exercise number uh, two. So this is will be for uh, today. So in this exercise, let's go, it has five, five parts. So the first part, we will be using the SRTM 30 meter uh, dam to find the surface water elevation. You know, the SRTM, it's a machine that's flew in 2000 and it's also it only flew one time so we we probably have the srtm over any reservoir only for one time so we can get the elevation when this srtm passed in 2000 over the reservoir in your region of interest this will be number one so and then after we got that we will be using again the srtm to drive the area elevation curve because once we know this elevation and we we have an idea about the reservoir like for example if I'll be showing for Hayas one Dam. The Hayas one Dam has the maximum maximum elevation is 182. So if you know this information, then we can use the SRTM to get all the reservoir areas between the the, the minimum elevation, which is the one we, we will uh, get it from part one, to the maximum elevation, which you should know from your reservoir or the information you know about your reservoir, which is B number two. So from here, we, we will drive the area elevation curve for from SRTM. And then number three, we will discuss that the SRTM drive for, for uh, uh, from one and two would be actually only a few points. And sometimes we want to extrapolate this because as I said, SRTM only flew on in, two, in 2000. So we, not, we need to extrapolate this curve and for that we use Landsat images. And I will show you how we did that. And then after that, we will have the area elevation curve ready to use and so to apply this we will do two applications which is number four and five number four is for example if you are interested to know highest one dam what is the level at highest one dam the most recent level for highest one dam based on the satellite images landsat actually visit every 16 days so we will try to check what is the highest one dam 
last August or last September maybe. So this will be the first application. The second application, you will be just the same as number four, but just to plot a time series and see what is the trend, for example, in the reservoir storage area, uh, reservoir storage level of Hyas-1 dam. So part one is here. I will go through the code. Uh, I hope it works. Yeah, I think I have to open the same. Okay, so you will be able to see something like this. Uh, I just wanna kind of, uh, yeah, this one is good. Okay, so you can see again, as uh, we just, we, Nishan showed you yesterday and we, uh, we did this in the practical session. Again, you have here this window with the different scripts of, uh, of your account. You have the docs if you want to visit, again, the different methods or functions, and then you have the assets. And uh, some people are asking, what is the assets? Actually here, the assets, uh, yeah, maybe I, yeah, I should have some, uh, some, some, you can here actually upload, if you have, if you wanna upload any shape files or something, you can do it here. I think I have it, but in another account maybe, because I used to have some shape files here uploaded for the Nile River or for uh, different shape files. So you can upload your shape files here. So let's go back to the script. So the script here, you will find for each script, I, I put something called an input, user user input. So this is the only thing you need to change in the in the script. Like for example, here the ROI is the region of interest. If, if you draw a geometry, I mean, you know the geometry is saved here, then the geometry will, you can just here type the name of the geometry. If you have the, if, if you have the geometry, I mean, I, I have the geometry here for, uh, for Lake Nasser, so. Let me show you the geometry. If we go to, just let's fly back to Egypt. Yeah, here is Lake Nasser, and this is actually the the the, the polygon I, I I drew around Lake Nasser. So this polygon is called the geometry, and you know, as to draw polygon, you just go here, go select draw shape, and just draw the polygon around the lake. Like, yeah, like here is the lake from just the the set, the, the image of uh, Google Earth. And then I, I, I plot the polygon around it. So the only thing you want to change in the first code is just draw your geometry and just check the name of the geometry and, and put it here. And then you will run. So once you run this code, it will give you an histogram of elevation. So the histogram of elevation is showing you the, the number of pixels. And actually you can also, uh, You can also just turn off the geometry. You see here, this is SRTM over uh, Lake Nasser. And uh, you can also turn it off or turn it on from here. But, uh, but what is the histogram is showing? It's showing uh, at each elevation, how many pixels inside the polygon that you selected. So for example, if we, the, this is the highest uh, elevation, which is actually corresponding to the, the, the maximum frequency or most of the pixels are at a level of 179. And what does this, what that, that mean? It means that the, when the SRTM flew, the, the Lake, Lake Nasser or the highest one dam reservoir was at a level of 179. And actually you can also expand this so you can see better. So here, this is, you, you, you have to check this to get this level, which is 179 here. So this is the level when the SRTM flew and this is the level that we need from this code. So the main thing to get it from this code is to get this level, which is the, has the maximum frequency in the histogram. So this is actually the first code. So this code is done, but you, you wanna, if you wanna go through it or through the, the, the functions, yeah, you can do that in the, when we uh, go to the breakout rooms. Then this is the first part. And then the second part is, uh, as I said, we want to, and I explain here everything. So if you want to do that, you, you, you will follow these steps. And then I also added here, maybe some of you will ask why we are, why this point that has a maximum frequency, it's the, the, the water level. So I have here one paper it's explaining this, how this works with the SRTM, how, why we are caring about this elevation. And uh, you will, you, I mean, probably you understand the concept from this figure. But now to, we have one level. And also, as I said, we know the maximum level of the, the reservoir. For, for example, in case of highest one dam, it's one, 189, uh, 182. So this is the second code. Let's go to the second code. So the second code, again, you have the user input. And by the way, uh, this user input, I mean, this is the way I'm doing it is, is not the best. I mean, you can actually, there is ways here in, uh, in Google Earth Engine, if you want to, to create like a button or something and 
give it more like kind of functionality to, so that you can like a kind of like making it more uh, uh, like uh, interactive face. Uh, interact. It has like kind of interactive uh, face, but I think uh, for for this exercise, I think it's okay. You just have you will see this user input in the beginning of the of the script, uh, and uh, uh, for this second code, you you will only change again the geometry. And the second will be changing the, the, the elevation. So here you want to put the, the elevation you got it from the histogram. And this is the maximum elevation that you, you, you should know from your reservoir. As I said, in highest one dam, it's 182. And the 179 is just the, the elevation we got it from the histogram in the first part of the exercise. Then you will just click run. Yeah, and here you will, you will see the, the, the area elevation curve. And again, you can expand it here to, to look at it. So here's the area and here's the elevation. So this is the area elevation curve for high one dam using the SRTM. And what, what you can see here that we are getting very close actually, you know, I don't know if some of you probably know that the, the reservoir area of high one dam is the maximum is 6200, it's 6200, which is actually, we are getting it here at the maximum elevation 182. And, uh, Again, the minimum elevation we get it from SRTM is 179. So this is a problem because if you know about highest one dam, it's, it's, it's uh, elevation or the active storage ranges between 147 up to 182. So I think 179, that's, we don't have enough information now about the uh, area elevation curve. And I think we cannot rely only on the SRTM. And that's why we try to extrapolate. So if you go back to the exercise, we go to part three to extrapolate this uh, yeah, to extrapolate this area elevation curve so that we can have some idea about what is the lower elevation. And to do that, as I said, SRTM only flew one time in 2000. So we are looking at, at other satellites like the Landsat, which has, is continuously flowing, like every 16 days is providing images. So we have the code number three. If you go there, again, you will see the, the user input. And sometimes, you know, this green, all the green colors in the script is just a comment. So if you want to comment, if you want to type like a comment or something here to describe what is the, what is this line is doing, that's what I did here actually. So here we, uh, oh, sorry, I think maybe I forget showing the screen. Yeah. So uh, here, what we, we, what we will change again, you'll change the geometry, the region of the ROI or the region of influence. And then you will change the, you will have something very important here, which is we need to know some kind of elevation because Landsat is only providing the area of the reservoir. It will not give any information about the elevation. So you need to know some kind of information about the, 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 the surface water elevation of the highest one dam or whatever dam you are using. Either you can get a measured data, which sometimes it's very hard to get it. And in my case, I use also another satellite that I described in my presentation and I use in my research. It's called, uh, uh, as I said, it's called uh, uh, altimetry. So the altimetry is providing the, 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 water the, the surface water elevation using the, uh, the altimetry observation. So there is actually one website which is uh, uh, processing this altimetry, uh, observation and then producing the water level for different lakes. It's not only for highest one dam, it's producing for many lakes. And I provided in the, the hands-on, I provided like two resources for that. The HydroWeb is one of them. It's a French uh, agency that's creating, uh, I mean, doing this processing of the altimetry and producing the, the, the water level and the surface area and also the, the storage if you want. Uh, and another uh, resource was developed here in the U.S. by the Department of uh, Agriculture, I believe, it's US USDA. And so you will have the two, the, the two uh, data, the two databases if you want to visit and get an idea how they work. But anyway, what we want from here is just to get some elevations and make sure to get the date that's corresponding to the elevation. And I'm looking at elevations lower than 179. For example. The one that I'm picking now, it's saying that in 2014, uh, in August uh, 6, the elevation of highest one dam was 174, which is okay. We can pick this one because 174 is less than uh, 179. So we can pick this and we will look at the Landsat image at that time. 
So we will try to look at the Landsat image at that time. So we, we will pick three, three, three dates. So we can just kind of looking for three Landsat images. So I, I, if I go back to the script, I picked three dates here and the corresponding elevation. So the dates I picked is uh, uh, August 17 and July 24 and April 19. Uh, and with a different elevation, as, as you see here, this I got it from the website of the hardware. So you want, if you if you will use your own reservoir, you just need to change the dates. And uh, the dates here, I only define the dates for like the kind of the month when we uh, uh, when we got this uh, this water elevation. So for example, for August 2014, I will look from January 1st, uh, sorry, from August 1st to August 30. So it means we are looking for all the images in this month. The same, the second one was in July, so we look for all the images in July and, and so on. And the third one in April, we look for all the images in April. Because as I said, the, the, the altimeter data is available like every 10 days, but the Landsat is available every 16 days. So this gap, we, that's why we are, I'm looking for the images for the 30 days. But there is another reason, maybe I will discuss this later, why we are also looking about 30, 30, uh, 30 days because Lake, Lake Nasser or the highest one dam reservoir is very large. It's probably the largest, I think, reservoir in the world and it's it's very large. So to have all the images covering the entire reservoir, you probably need to kind of extending this period to maybe one month or something. But anyway, yeah, that's all that you want to provide and make sure to, if you, if you will in the future, you will be uh, having more points. Here I'm only uh, including three points uh, from Landsat. So you, will, you, will, you need to change the number of images, which is here three points. Then we will run this. <clears throat> Sometimes it takes time for running the code, especially when it goes to the, because you know, it's running on the server. So it takes some time to run. <clears throat> Uh, that's too much actually. Yeah, I think there's. Okay, let me go again. Yeah, I don't know what's. Uh, sometimes it's uh, taking time to run. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't think, uh, oh, sorry. I don't know why the... Mm. Yeah, let me just check if it's running or not. But uh, anyway, let's go back to the exercise. I'll, I'll show you the results here and then you will kind of check it. If it doesn't work in your computer, then I'll share the link again with you. But anyway, what you will get after running, you will see here, this is actually, the Landsat image. So you will see here uh, the lake, uh, the, the, the reservoir area that's derived from the Lake Nasser or for Lake Nasser from the Landsat. And in, the, in, the, in this window in the console, I think there is an error. Yeah, I think there is an error with the, with the server uh, to perform uh, the operation. So let's wait for some time, maybe it will be fixed. But anyway, in this window, the console window, you will get the the the, the reservoir area. So I will, you'll need to copy this and maybe put it in Excel. So you will copy these values for the reservoir area at different dates. And you have the elevation already from the hydro web. So you have three more points and you will do that in, in Excel to kind of driving the area elevation curve. So you will see here four points from SRTM and you will have three points from Landsat, so you will get a better representation of the area elevation curve. Then number four, and by the way, you don't have to, to do all of this today. You, as I said, you have the codes, just try to uh, uh, kind of visit the codes and uh, uh, see see how it works. Let me just, uh, I think uh, Awad has, uh, is raising your hand. Awad, yeah, go ahead if you have a question. Sure. Okay, so uh, I'm now, in, uh, now I'm applying this, uh, parts in uh, Rochelle's uh, reservoir, okay? So I finished the first and second part, but the third part, I already have the uh, measured elevation, okay? But I didn't uh, uh, 
uh, understand which which um, elevation should I took. Uh, first okay. of all, you said that should yeah. be less than the minimum that already came from the first part. Okay. So okay, okay. Uh, no problem with that. But but the second part, uh, when it comes to um, the dates, could it be uh, maybe uh, uh, um, close to each other or uh, also the 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 date itself? Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I say, I mean, you can take the dates, try to take like a different month so you get a different elevation. So in, in the case of Highest One Dam, uh, because we want to cover as much range as we can. So in case of Highest One Dam, for example, I, uh, I'm i not sure if their link is corrupted or something. I will, maybe I will share a new link for that. But anyway, for the Highest One Dam, I, uh, I, I got a different elevation. So to get a different elevation, probably you will need to you will need to go for different months because you know, the, for example, the, the reservoir, the, the in highest one dam, it goes down during maybe June or July before the flooding season. So maybe pick one day here and maybe pick one day uh, in, in, in maybe, so you can in, in August, so you can get a, a well, probably maybe not August, maybe in July or something when it's around 175 or something. So uh, just try to cover in different ranges. But, and so I think to cover different ranges, you probably need to, to have it in different days, different dates and different months probably. So it's, it's better to get okay. it at dates. Just make sure you are covering a range of elevation. So when you extrapolate, you are kind of covering as much as you can information, as much information as you can about the reservoir. Okay, okay. Did I, does that answer your question or? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, great. Okay. It's a, uh, uh, yeah, so so for, for, the, for part number four, actually the idea is to, drive for the most recent uh, storage level. So uh, what you will do here is just uh, get this. I, again, you will need to change your geometry and then you will have two coefficients, coefficient A and B. So this so two coefficients is the, the Excel relationship. Like, you know, you will fit a power relationship in Excel. Uh, let me show it to you very quickly. You will fit this relation. So the, the coefficients is only like this coefficient, like the A and the power is coefficient number. B. So once you define these two coefficients, you just put it here and then you will run this code. I hope it runs. Yeah, so here we go. So it runs now and it will take some time until it's computing the computing the most recent. This is the most recent uh, reservoir area and reservoir elevation for Lake uh, Nasser. So let's see what is the level for the last couple of days. So it's 180. So which I think this is actually using the, the area elevation curve we, we, we have, it, we, we got it from the, the first part, which I think very close to what is, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure if you are following the news, but the news is saying that the highest one down now is the, 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 the water level is very high. And uh, so this, I think is, is matching very well what is going on and probably that the elevation is very high at highest one down. Uh, so the last part, which is a kind of, uh, interesting as well that you can now now you got only one point which is the recent point but what if you want to to see if there is any trend in the storage level so in this case if you go to this code then you can specify the starting date the ending date and then running running the code for uh yeah i hope it's not corrupted as well but in, 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 in here you will you can run this code so you can see if there is any trend in the storage uh, level and uh, I did it for uh, I think this is the code number five so I, I did this for uh, yeah here we go so I did it for five years from 2014 to 2019 and then you specify also the month so the start month, end month, and then the number of days is actually how, 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 how many days you will go back to search for the Landsat. So for example, I said, let's try 30 days. But here I, I actually, I, when I tried 30 days, I didn't find that the Landsat images will be able to cover all the Lake Nasser because Lake Nasser is very big. It might be actually, this number of days might be uh, different for your case, but you, you need to try different numbers until you reach the number of days that uh, the reservoir is is entirely covered by the Landsat images. And then again, you specify the two uh, coefficients, A and B, from the power relationship of the uh, area elevation curve. Let's run and see. It will take some time because it's running for uh, the five years. But here we will see the trend in the 
highest Sandam elevation during the recent year, uh, years. If you remember from my presentation uh, uh, I presented today, today uh, I showed that the elevation actually in the last couple of years is very high at highest one dam. So uh, let's see if what our elevation curve will, will say about that. Uh, you can change this part, this inputs, uh, even if you want to, uh, let's wait. If you want to change the month, if you want to run it, for example, for only one month, like see what is the trend in August for the last five years. You can do that. You can just say the start month is eight, the end month is eight, and it only run for this month for August. And we'll show you the trend in the August uh, elevation from like the five years. And uh, again, why I spice specified 2014? I didn't go before 2014 because I'm using here a satellite image called Landsat 8, which uh, is only available from, I believe, maybe August, April 2013 or something. So I started just from 2014 for this reason. But you can later, I mean, you can change the code and running it for Landsat 7, which is available in the 90s and in the, the 2000 as well. So, uh, I mean, I think Landsat 7, uh, I mean, there is other projects of Landsat that are available in 2000 and uh, in the 90s as well. So you can do that. So here, I get a, I got an error, unfortunately. But this error is probably because of the the server is, itself. And sometimes we need to kind of like reloading the page again and trying to run to run this code again. So uh, I think it will it might take some time to to run. Or actually, I can just run it. Yeah, it might take some time because it's for five years and sometimes if the server is a kind of very busy, so it might get an error because especially Lake Nasser is very, is very big. Uh, but let's, let's try one more time. If not, we will just go to the big out rooms and then we will start working in the session. If you want to ask any questions, we can, you can ask the question before we go to the big out room and while waiting for this maybe to run. I think it might take some time. So let's let's go to the breakout rooms. Uh, I assigned the breakout rooms like yesterday, uh, the same group. So you should now, I think by now you probably will be able to join the breakout rooms. Let me uh, open all the breakout rooms. Yeah, you should get an invitation now to the breakout rooms. Those who are not assigned, I'll be assigning them soon. So people, can you join the group action? I didn't see people in the group. Uh, Can you start joining the group out rooms? I see some people join uh, in, in the Amazon River, Ilham and Hadir and Mahmoud and Muhammad Ahmed. Can you join? By the way, Muhammad, do you have? Are you are you signing in by two accounts? Because I have Muhammad Ahmed twice. So, I'm not. Okay, this one. 